Hey everyone, Chris Sawyer here. The Varietal Show is back. I am here in Santa Barbara County. I am having a great time with my friends, Dick Dore and his wonderful wife, Jenny. And um, we're at Fox and uh, Vineyards and Winery. Um, this is one of my favorite stops ever. Um, and I was, I was kind of going over, um, I, I saw a nice little uh, picture inside there. And I think it was 1994. That I came to the first festival here in Santa Barbara County, and you were obviously there. And uh, Dick, um, this winery was already in effect. Uh, it was in effect since uh, 1985. 1985 is when this winery started. 1985, uh, Pinot Noir, no one knew anything about Pinot Noir. Um, Santa Barbara County was just really getting a big start there. You had someone like, um, you know, like uh, Sanford and Benedict and, and some of these wonderful producers that were starting out and Santa Maria Valley. This is the most important thing you're going to learn today. Santa Maria Valley was a big deal, but no one knew it yet. Um, and uh, wouldn't you That's say so? True. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Everyone knew it for strawberries. Everyone knew it for fruit. Everyone knew it for avocados like I do today. But the fact was things have changed here. And Santa Maria Valley is a big deal. And this Chenin Blanc that we're starting out with is a big deal to me. And I made sure that when we were going to talk today, I said, you got to do the Chenin Blanc. Please do the Chenin Blanc. And, of course, I got my way. I love it. <laughs> um, so, um, Nick, you know, it's wonderful to be here with you and Jenny. Yeah. Um, we've known each other for so long. Um, you long know, time. A long time. Long I know. Time. See, I do get some age on me, uh, you people, but um, <laughs> it's just because I drink wine that I look young. Um, but the fact is, um, we've we've gone through a lot. Tell us a little bit about Foxen and how this brand got started. We're here in Foxen Canyon Road, and obviously that's kind of where the name came from, but tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the, the actual winery was started uh, by uh, my now partner for 35 years, Bill Wathen. The two of us decided we'd make a hobby wine because um, everybody seemed to be making wine around that day. And we started with actually making a Cabernet and, and a couple of years we made hobby wines and then we decided we wanted to get serious. And we bought some French oak. And because of the cost of that, we were informed by my partner's wife, who was our accountant, that we damn well better become <laughs> professional. Because we were paying three times what we were paying for American oak. And we would have to sell this stuff. So anyway, it started out as a hobby. We named it after my great-great-grandfather, William Benjamin Foxen, who moved up here in 1837 on this property, and we've been here ever since, my family. And uh, anyway, it, it became uh, this sort of avocation that became a vocation overnight. And uh, anyway, that's, that's a really good line. And, yeah. Fox, and, <laughs> and Foxen was the 13th winery in, in oh, Santa yeah. Barbara County. Okay, that's a good lucky, trivia lucky, thing. If you guys win a lot 13. of money uh, from a trivia contest, don't forget about us, and especially Jenny, that she just told you that. The, 13th, exactly. um, 13th. the lucky 13, lucky the Baker's 13th. Dozen, Baker's Dozen. That's right. Um, here we are drinking Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc, uh, here's a good stat, and I've, I've used it on this show before, but you know, at one point, 1980, there was 50,000 acres of Chenin Blanc, and there were less than 10,000 acres of Chardonnay. Yep. That changed 100% yes. within about a five-year period. And Chenin Blanc became lost. But this vineyard was not lost. Um, tell us yeah. a little bit about this vineyard. These are old vine vineyard uh, selections here that are in this blend. Very, very old. And, and actually this vineyard was planted by my great uncle uh, back in what? 50, 19, 1966. 1966. He went up when, as uh, Chris was saying, a lot of the early vineyards here were Chenin Blanc before they discovered that Chardonnay was the queen and we ought to get it here. But he planted and went and got cuttings. So this is a three and a half acre vineyard that he planted on its own roots, planted 65 years ago or 50. <laughs> yeah, in 1966, you do the math. Uh, you, I don't want to do the math. <laughs> anyway, it, it turned out to be this little treasure of a vineyard that we have been dealing with now for our 35 years. We started making it simply because my partner Bill had worked with 
Dick Graft up at Shalom for a number of years, and he had That's always a done deal. a dry shin and blog. Yeah. And in honor of the late Dick Graft, we yeah. started making here, one. Here to Dick Graft. Here, here to Dick Graft. Amazing legend, icon, still an icon. Yeah. His spirit is with, the, with us. Yeah. And that's why on the bottle it does say Old Vine. Old Vine, too. exactly. And it's one of the. It's now one of the oldest um, Shannon Vineyards in California. Yeah, I if mean, not, I believe it's not the oldest. Yeah. yeah. So here we are drinking this, and you know, I was, I was just telling them one of my great friends, Petra, has this at the the caviar um, uh, company. Mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, Sausalito, or sorry, in Tiburon, mm -hmm. um, is where she's got it going, and it's fantastic. I mean, like, this is a, a wine that you're caviar. having with caviar, of caviar, course you are. Caviar, raw yeah. oysters, Yeah, it's a great raw fish, bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's just a fabulous wine. Yeah, so that's an amazing thing. And so I, we also had one of the, the Chardonnays, and that's actually from your piece of property. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your little home ranch, and we'll get into the Pinot in a second, but yeah. I want to show you guys... Um, a little something something here and that is um, the blend here um, this is the Syrah from your your property there yeah uh, but the other one is the cuvee I'm not yeah. sure what, oh here we go here we go here we go still there yep got it got it the cuvee so you might see the Williamson um, Doré uh, well that was her maiden name Williamson yeah. so I'm the and, Williamson he's the Doré so and so that's happening, and this is the Cuvée Jean Marie. Yes. Uh, it is uh, very Frenchy, but it is not necessarily Frenchy, is it? No, no. Yeah. No, no. So our partner Billy <laughs> is one of nine children, uh, seven boys, if you can imagine. Mm -mm -mm. And so he wanted to wine a blend named for his mom, and so and her name was. Uh, Marie uh, Jean, Jean Marie O'Callaghan. Yeah, Jean Marie Callahan. Jean Marie O'Callaghan. But I like to say Cuvée Jean Marie. So it sounds more Frenchy, even though it's not necessarily Frenchy. No. But the grapes are Frenchy. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We love exactly. this. We so love this, this is part. Grenache, a uh, little '66 Grenache, Cuvée Mauvedra, and 14% Syrah. And just to just to speak on behalf of you know the great people of the uh, Santa Maria Valley, there's some amazing. Grenache, Syrah, Movedra, um, and, and Viognier happening in this valley and mm -hmm. in Santa Barbara County overall. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are very excited about all these new uh, vintages because we get to taste <coughs> them. And the vines become more mature. And I think that's why we're still young here in Santa Barbara County. And I, it's just so interesting. I mean, don't you think so? I mean, with especially what's been happening with the Rones. Well, oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, the history of Santa Barbara County, it took us probably 15 years to figure out what to plant the right things in the yeah. right places. And it took us another 15 years to figure out how to make wine out of it. Yeah. And these vines now that are probably average throughout the county or anywhere from 15 to 20, 25 years old, mm -hmm. after the 12th and 14th years, we saw a tremendous difference in, in with the maturity of the grapes and the way things matured, it, 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 the whole area took off. Yeah. I mean, people recognized uh, that we were an area that was, we were an area that was uh, worth coming into. In fact, it was first recognized, I think, after its first 10, 15 years, Jess Jackson and Robert Mondavi, who had been buying grapes here for that first 10 years, said, why don't we go down there and put operations in? And it was amazing to have the, we called them the big boys come in because yeah. it gave us a credibility that mm -hmm. our grapes must be worth yeah. buying. Yeah. It was important at that time when they put the AVA on the bottle. Yeah, and Santa Maria is the first sub-AVA of this whole area. Right. Um, Santa Maria, or sorry, Santa Inez, was the was the next one and yeah. there's uh there's a lot of different appellations inside of that now so i yeah. mean that's how cool this this whole everyone was on to this um there was something that was happening here and uh you got to give Beringer a little bit of credit too i mean they were all uh chardonnay was getting big you guys that was that was the meridian yeah. out of uh paso robles at that time and they planted the white hills vineyard yep at that yeah. time exactly so speaking of red grapes now we're going to go into red grapes and uh, we just showed you uh, the great bottle from their property, but this is where we're at. So we're gonna taste a little bit of Santa Maria right now. And this is from the great 
Um, this is from the Bien Nacido Vineyard. This is Block 8. Um, and if you guys know anything about Bien Nacido Vineyard, it's a legendary family owned and operated vineyard uh, by the Miller family. Uh, Nicholas is my great buddy and um, you know we get to enjoy the fact that they're amazing farmers. And so this is Block 8. What is Block 8 all about? Well, oh, this the, is Pinot Noir, of course. The Miller family came to us some 20 years ago and said, we are going to craft over the vineyard that you're currently getting your Pinot Noir from. Can we plant you a vineyard like we've done for Jim Clendenin and Bob Lindquist on the property? You choose the site and for an exorbitant price, we will <laughs> plant you a vineyard, which they did and it became Block 8 and it was 12 acres. It's the highest and steepest vineyard in the Santa Maria Valley. It's made up of, uh, half of it is Pomard clone and the other half is four Dijon clones that sit side by side. Yep. Anyway, this particular wine that we're tasting right now is a combination of those Dijon clones. So Billy and our, our, our relationship is based on a, a lease rather than we pay and rather than paying for the fruit by the ton, we pay it by the acre. That way Billy can direct the farming, we can take the risk as farmers, we can crop it as low as, as we want. Right. Um, and that's really important. Yeah. And this was in 19, 1996. Yep. Um, and yeah, Auburn Clement was ever uh, and Foxen were really some of the first to, to begin yeah. that kind now of Now everyone just stands in line trying to get some of this yeah. fruit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's yeah. true, you guys. I mean, it's a very famous vineyard now, but it wasn't back in the 90s. And no. these people no. were taking a chance, especially being an independent grower, not part of a corporation or, mm -hmm. or a big um, winery that everyone knew about. They became the great grower family, you know. And there's yeah. there's the Solomons and the you know um, you know the the native nine and, and yes. James um, yes. Octaveras and and some of these people that really came in here and really started growing grapes because they were inspired by these kinds of wines. Mm -hmm. And it's changed what's happened here. Mm -hmm. It's made this area one of the great areas to grow Pinot Noir in the United States. There's no doubt about that. So what I love about this wine is just. A, it's it's got tons of complexity, but it's also silky smooth. It feels so great in the mouth. Yeah. It's one of the reasons that Pinot Noir became so successful. Hey, yes, we all saw it sideways. Yeah, I, uh -huh. so did you, right? Uh huh. And uh, I always like to say, who here would hang out with those guys from the <laughs> movie? And there's always a yeah, 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 you're cool. Um, but the fact is that. We knew its possibilities, but you have to grow it in areas that are cool. Why is this area so special here um, as far as the wind? Well, geographically, we have two valleys. We have the Santa Maria Valley and the San Ynez Valley that run counter to most valleys in California. It runs east-west as opposed to north-south. So it opens up to the west to the Alaskan Current, yep. which is a very cool, cool water. Yeah. And so that coolness is manifested up these valleys every night in the form of fog. And then about uh, 10 or 11 in the morning, a breeze comes up, moves the fog out. Which we're feeling this afternoon. And then when the breeze comes up, it shuts down the maturation. So we actually, because of the coolness, the vines really only have to work a couple hours a day. I know my partner calls the laziest vines in, in California because they only have to work a couple hours a day. <laughs> Which means even though we butt out the four most Pinot Noir areas in California, butting out in probably late February, early March, we harvest at the same time yeah. because we have warm spring and a cool summer. Yeah. 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 I hope you guys are hearing all the other people here because this is a Saturday and we're sitting outside here at Foxen. I hope you guys get to, to have this experience too. I just happen to be it's sitting next time. to two of the, the, <laughs> two of the owners, but it's all cool because um, we like each other a lot. We Absolutely. really do. Um, but we go, the, we, we we, go way we back. We go way back yeah. and we just have a lot of fun together and we love tasting fine wine. I will say this, uh, we were just at the World of Pinot Noir and um, here, here to, to those guys getting yeah. that back yeah. together yeah. and uh, us sitting there at a burgundy tasting 
you know, the three of us were sitting together. Um, Allison was there, and and uh, you know, Kristen from uh, the um, Napa Valley Wine School, or sorry, um, San Francisco Wine School. And here we were tasting great Burgundy. We've come a long ways here. We have a comparative, but I, I hope you guys understand. This is not Burgundy. We have the same grapes that are grown in Burgundy, but this is not Burgundy. And exactly what Dick was just saying is a very important point here. This is, we, we are influenced by the coast directly right here. Absolutely. And Burgundy is not next to the coast. And the soils are different here. What type of soil are we talking about when we get into Santa Maria Valley? Uh, Santa Maria Valley is colluvial and alluvial. In yeah. fact, uh, the higher the blockade is more colluvial because it's higher, it's got shirt and various other rocks in it. Um, I know, it was funny, one of my distributors talking about the difference between Burgundy and California, he said, Santa Barbara County wines are old world in style with California sunshine blended in. Did you hear that, you guys? That's big. That's big. <laughs> California sunshine, no doubt. Here we are. Uh, let's go into a little different area here. We're going to talk a little Santa Rita Hills. And and uh, this is uh, the great uh, Faye Siago. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a special uh, vineyard to you, isn't it? Very special. It was planted by uh, a winemaker here named Rick, Rick Longoria. Uh, I don't remember, 20, 30 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And... Uh, it's very special because of its location. It's in the south slope of the Santa Rita Hills, so it, it tends to uh, be one of the most perfectly located vineyards in Santa Barbara County. And the soils in this thing have are much more limestone, much more similar to the way it is in Burgundy. And this is also a high elevation uh, vineyard. It's in what Billy calls the Pinot Bowl of, of Santa Rita Hills that includes um, Fiddlesticks, um, Sea Smoke, Sanford and Benedict. Sanford and Benedict, Sanford, Sanford probably the most uh, legendary of them all. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yep. Um, so this is a special area. So we are close to the ocean again. Yes. Uh, the closest yeah. actually of that Appalachian you know, where you're really stretching it out there. Um, you know, what's the difference there for for what you feel? Like, when do you pick these versus Santa Maria Valley? Actually, the, the difference between the Santa Rita Hills and the Santa Maria Valley is we have cooler summers and warmer winters in the Santa Maria Valley, warmer summers and cooler in, in the Santa Rita Hills. But it ends up that we have about the same kind of hang time because of the early bud out in the cooler summers as they do with their warmer summer. Uh, we in the Santa Maria Valley tend to have a little more ocean influence because it opens up more to the ocean, to the Pacific, whereas the Santa Rita Hills does have a, a, a mountain formation that sort of blocks the coolness of the ocean, yeah. which accounts yeah, for a little is, warmer. The high, ju high elevation does keep it pretty cool yeah. where, where these particular, so we'll, we'll start harvest in, in the Santa Maria Valley, yeah. and you'll watch it, the harvest start on the inland side, yeah. and then just work their way towards the ocean. Mm -hmm. yep. And then uh, about halfway through Santa Maria Valley Pinot Picks, we'll start bringing in Santa Rita Hills. Yep. And it's so fun to watch because year in year out each vineyard and each vineyard block has its own set schedule yep it's so amazing i mean each block and you know, we're not just talking about full vineyard we're talking about each no. block inside of vineyards and i think that once again we go back to the miller family and blocks became it became an important mm -hmm. term that a lot of us that just you know, we're getting into the industry back in the 90s, like me and a young guy. You know, blocks became something important. It's because of the Millers, actually. Yes. And, uh, you know, and then winemakers wanted different things, and there are different clones of Pinot Noir, and there's all these factors that come in. So we need to know what's inside. So what is the, what are the clonal variations inside this guy? Uh, in the, which are we This, this is, uh, the Faciega. The Faciega uh, is mainly Dijon clones. I think it's 115, 112. No, 113. Oh, 113. Oh, no, the old one, yeah. And I think some Mount Eden also. Okay. So then you got clone 37. 
You got yeah. some good. You got some yeah. goodies in there, don't you? You're well, stuffing, well, you know. stuffing this bottle full of goodies. You know, yeah, you guys. Whereas, whereas the the block eight that we tasted this is the block earlier, eight. this block eight um, is the one thirteen, one fifteen, the two A clone, Mount Eden, and a little <coughs> bit of the Pomard. Yeah, I think the yeah. two A clone is one of the most interesting. Me in too. The, it's a Swiss clone, and it's yep. a a thicker skin grape, so it tends to mature a little slower. Tends to be picked a couple of weeks later than the Dijon clones, and it adds tannin to the Pinot Noir, which Pinot's not known for having a lot of tannin. Yeah. It adds a tannin structure because of the thicker skin. Yeah, yeah. I love this wine too, and I mean, it's got that classic kind of black <coughs> raspberry. You know, raspberry. When I was with uh, Richard um, uh, Sanford, he said, you know, Chris, raspberry is a is a characteristic of this area, Absolutely. and actually, it's yeah. got it right in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is a little bit of the blue fruit kind of characteristic. Mm -hmm. Blue we, versus the red fruit right. of Santa Maria Valley. It's right. Really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah and, but Santa Maria Valley, you guys, if you really drive down the roads here in Santa Maria Valley, you see strawberries everywhere. And so, I mean, there's something about red fruits, and you're yeah. just kind of like, oh, I, I get it, I get it. Yeah. But this area is a little bit harder to find. You have to be up in the mountains to look down on it to understand yeah. well, it. Uh, it's all about um, geography. I mean, it's like these hills and this topography there is very different than this huge valley here. And, well, and, to, get more, and to get more specific in Santa Rita Hills, there are actually two corridors. Yes, exactly. There's the 246 corridor. Right. And then there's the, the Santa, Santa Rosa, Rosa Road. Yeah. So one has more sandy soils, exactly. and the other is limestone. Exactly. And it's so interesting. We make eight single vineyard pinots, and it's so interesting because, as as you were they're saying, all they're, they're all, all different. different, and they really speak to the terroir, which yeah. is which is what pinot is all about. Yeah, exactly. Well, to close it off, I will say one thing. You do like Cabernet Franc, don't you? I love Cabernet. Yeah, so <laughs> here, I got to show you guys the bottle because. Um, I, I actually really grew to love Cabernet Franc, not just from this area, obviously, but from, I, I love going to the Loire Valley, but this Cabernet Franc is the real deal, too, so hopefully that focuses in a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I know Cabernet Franc, and I, we were talking about Bedford and, and Thompson, like, that was, like, kind of the first time back in the mid-90s yeah. mm -hmm. that I came here and tasted Cabernet Franc that I was, like, all... Damn, that's really good. Yeah. But you you like it enough that you bottle one, don't you? Yeah, well, I think, it, like, I think it, it, it shows the coolness of our whole growing area. Yeah. Yeah. Because Cabernet Franc, of all the Bordeaux, or the three major Bordeaux varietals, tends to be to prosper in a cooler climate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love their Syrah. I love their Pinots, I love their Shannons, I love their Chardonnays, I love their their blends. I love everything about these guys. I love everything about Billy the winemaker. I love everything about everyone. Um, and this is just what this is about um, here in Santa Barbara County, but also, more importantly, Santa Maria Valley. And Santa Maria Valley is a big deal, you guys. I know it, I got to explore it, and I hope you guys just learned a lot about it through these two. Dick and Jenny, thank Come you so us. much. Come and oh, see them and join thank in the you. fun. Cheers. Chris, it's a pleasure. Yeah, and, and before we leave, how do we get a hold of some of these wines we were just talking about? Oh, um, Get online, foxandvineyard.com. We've got a great website. It will yeah. explain yeah. our wines. It will allow you to become a club member. Anyway, it's great. And I'll, I will just say one last plug, too. Um, a lot of songs out there like this brand. Um, Kind of because Jenny was the best marketer ever that I ever met. Um, but, you know, uh, you will see it on great wine lists. Um, and uh, don't be surprised. And if you can't make a decision, choose Foxen. Oh, right. Cheers. 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 Salud. Salud. Mm.